So I'm going to be, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I know we are delayed, so I'm going to jump some yeah, uh, slides. Um, I'm glad that John touched and also Kendall touched on some of, uh, of that. Just to, uh, to show here, uh, many of these uh, slides uh, come from the studies at, uh, at LERF and Greeley from the USDARS and other, uh, also from farmers from some fields. But uh, you can see the, here the cumulative water use um, based on, for example, infrared thermometry, uh, estimating evapotranspiration that way for a well water corn, and then some that has limited irrigation. So, that, well, the definition of stress is there. I'm going to go. But the, the, the thing is that by estimating or computing or measuring evapotranspiration, and the question has been shown several times already, that you could get to, a, to an, uh, a calculation of stress by getting the actual water use through different means, like remote sensing, the different levels that Kendall mentioned, and compared to the kind of a potential of a non-stress water use. And of course, we have other means, the soil water balance has been also um, touched several times during this meeting and towers, lysimeters, and also we had a presentation on heat poles um, by Gray. So, and so if you have the actuality by, I, I know it's not that um, common to use the potential evapotranspiration, but it's an ETC, non-stress, you can get your stress computed. The thing with uh, soil moisture sensors, and most of them, the, the majority, just a, a few ones, like the true TDR, time domain reflectometry, that are, uh, I guess, uh, well designed and well calibrated. Most others, they have uh, errors and fluctuations influenced by temperature of the soil and salinity of the soil, and you have to come up with a uh, in situ calibration for the soil and the type of in in installation that you have. Even um, the same type of sensor is not consistent. You have variability among sensors. The technology is uh, growing, uh, the commercial companies are aware. And so these uh, are improving. But we can get through the soil water balance and estimation of, of uh, actual water. So Kendall touch uh, on the use of infrared thermometry to get canopy, avoid soil, avoid, avoid even the air if you are closer to, um, to the crop. Just vegetation <laughs> is better as you see the different temperatures on, on the leaves and the stress. And this is just a graph showing the different treatments uh, us with John um, there at this uh, really f side where three different treatments were fully irrigated, the one, uh, the drought, the two, and limited irrigation, the three. You can tell the monitoring with infrared thermometry, the different temperature. And even the, the black one line is the air temperature. You see the wider the range, you have more sensible heat flux and uh, that's showing for the stress one. Just the equation, I think you, you have seen that uh, for the stress coefficient. Uh, oh, just uh, there have been several studies in setting the baseline for the um, crowder stress index uh, for the non-stress uh, lower threshold and particularly to the that we did one in Greeley and one in Eilif. Um, Selecta Havayan was involved, and, and, and also Hansen, Neil Hansen, and others on this one. It's very close to the Arizona for, developed by the ARS for corn. There's some variability with uh, North Dakota and California, so some of the, I guess, uh, influence of the microclimate and varieties is in there. Uh, but also the soil water balance also has been touched is, is an option to, to go for evapotranspiration. Kendall also mentioned this for the, even the non-stress um, plot that is fully irrigated um, shows some stress from time to time and depending on the time of the day you could have uh, a, a different effect, you know, a different amount of water computed. So Tom Trout also in his presentation yesterday mentioned depending on the time of the day that you measure you're going to get a different stress. So you have to, to decide uh, which one is more representative. Uh, here is the, the, the stress with the oblique IRT 
The black line is the upper envelope for, for noise stress. This is from the reference evapotranspiration and crop coefficient. And uh, we use just uh, one model here based on the water ba um, energy balance and compare to soil water balance from Newton probe. And these are the error uh, comparing the oblique versus the nadir um, infrared thermometry. So the infrared thermometers, if you look um, nadir just straight down, you're seeing some of the background temperature and depending, of course, um, where you are in the cycle, the growth cycle, but larger errors, right? Uh, uh, 13 to 26, almost 27 percent error compared to 6 uh, to 8 percent, I guess, with the oblique. Also, Soleil de developed these for uh, for soils in in I live, where there is a nice relationship between uh, the corroder stress index and the soil volumetric water content. And perhaps you can break this into two curves, even one here and that it has a, less, uh, a smaller slope. So for a unit change in um, volumetric, volumetric water content, it doesn't change much, the crow water stress index. But at one point, the slope changes, and then you have for a, a, an increment in, in uh, a drop in soil water content, a larger crow water stress index. And the different points, depending on the soil type and the vegetation type. Well, we tested some um, energy balance models here to source uh, the temp aerodynamic temperature base, the crowder stress index, and some um, crop coefficient based on reflectance. We have three, uh, I mean, yes, and based, on, based on NDVI and percent cover, I think is some of the ones that we have seen. And uh, using UAV data, so reflectance and temperature data from the aircraft, and uh, I'm going to just show here the seasonal. Seasonal, but seasonal, uh, I mean just a, a few flights that we had and in a previous presentation. Uh, I talk about the difficulties of getting uh, very frequent uh, coverage with the UAV. But the two source energy balance models was more consistent and gave errors uh, lower than the one millimeters per day. And um, in here, the cumulative for error. Then um, the FAO, when we assume the root zone at one meter and the uh, temperature base uh, energy balance also was close. I was uh, expecting that the fractional cover would be a better result, but not for, for this data from the UAV. Just have that in mind when I show the... Oh, if he wants to move. Now we're going to move to the uh, satellite base, also way of getting evapotranspiration. Um, John Altenhofen also alluded to the um, use of uh, the reset, which uh, uses uh, metric and, and CBAL, depending on, on the availability of data uh, with, with interpolated uh, weather data, and also has other functions, but it has been caught in, in different platforms in here and can be operated in different ways, um, teasing polygons, but also just uh, across the, um, among all the weather stations available, the weather parameters. But we did this uh, again at the USDARS Lear Farm, and these are the fields that John Altenhofen has been uh, operating for the surface uh, irrigation. Um, this is data from 2014. Uh, the black line is the alfalfa reference evapotranspiration computed with the um, weather station data that is uh, somewhere there, I guess the, there, the square. Um, I wanted to call the detection. The red line is the reset um, estimation of ET. The other models, one, two, and three, are the crop coefficients uh, based on reflectance. The first one is the um, NDVI base. The second is the SABI, soil adjusted vegetation in this base crop coefficient. And the third one is the percent cover, which is based on NDVI. And um, Ayman El Haddad uh, ran this uh, for us, and he was even surprised to see um, that we're close. He was expecting not to see the vegetation indices um, producing a crop coefficient that would work in a way closer. 
But something in here, uh, when the crop is developing, uh, that um, model based on, on this uh, model number three, again, is a percent cover. It was getting closer. And some points, in, maybe we can see the other, the other uh, fields that were monitored similarly. Later on, the, um, yeah, it says the model uh, kind of drifted a little bit. And we saw also on the other field, these are the three fields from the area that was least south of Lirf. Well, we have those three different treatments. It was a deficit. But in 2014, we didn't see much deficit, really. We had some rainfall. And they are tracking very well up to the reproductive, I guess, stage when they started uh, separating. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a good feed. And it's a promising, I guess, um, thing that the crop coefficients based on reflectance can perhaps be used. And you know, that's just a, a first attempt to do that. Now I'm going to jump to the 2015 data, where we had uh, was a hotter year, not as hot as uh, 2012. Uh, that was extreme year. But 2015, and then um, let me go to the other fields, maybe. This is the full irrigation. See the rapid growth. And um, the reset even is showing some stress, I guess, uh, for the fully irrigated compared, I guess, if you compare to the reference ET for alfalfa. And the, um, the green line, which is for this method based on soil adjusted vegetation in this index, is following better where you have some soil background appearing. But later on, we have the model based on NDVI yeah, matching better. Well, not too much variation, but consistently that's what's, what's happening uh, through the different treatment. Now, uh, this is the last uh, slide that I have and I wanted to show. And if you have questions, then we we'll can go back to some of the other ones. Recently, in collaboration with um, Dr. Cabot, Perry Cabot, and um, uh, Amandeep uh, ran the reset model uh, in Montrose uh, for last year, and we had a, a, a larger purchasing telemeter there. So the blue bar is the weather station um, base um, and crop coefficient base evapotranspiration for this pasture. It's a grass pasture land. Um, of course, uh, estimating for, for no stress. But at one point, this uh, land was uh, deprived of irrigation, just called the split irrigation. So some parts of the cycle was deprived of water. And the gray bars is for the reset, the energy balance based remote sensing, showing a less uh, water use. But the last um, was um, showing a, a larger evapotranspiration uh, we, in this case, we are not trusting the loss uh, because the, um, the wind speed was lower most of the cases in that region, and then you don't have enough mixing, enough aerodynamics uh, um, and turbulence uh, happening, and I think uh, it was not registering well. Um, and so we have to revisit that, but it was not that expected. But again, this is uh, different ways to, to monitor water use and go back to the consumptive use of water saved um, just by tracking evapotranspiration with ground-based uh, thermometers, perhaps with the UAVs and different methodologies with uh, remote sensing. I think uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Jose. Thank you.